awesome. Thank you. I sent you that on the WhatsApp. Yes, I can see that. Yeah. So I'm right. also using my technology. So I have my MacBook here and my other laptop here. So I can have a WhatsApp and a Zoom going on simultaneously. <laughs> right. So, Tesla, before I hand over to you, I would like to do an introduction. Um, so, today, Peshwa is going to, Peshwa is Peshwa Acharya. He's going to take us through his insights and observations, uh, you know, and advice for us as marketing, sales, product team, uh, professional in the post-COVID situation. That's what he's going to take us through. Uh, Peshwa is a friend of CL First, uh, a batchmate of Suzy from IIT Kharagpur. He's an alumnus of Iron Kolkata, a complete senior management professional and business leader with over 30 years of working. So, Peshwa, a lot of people in this room are not even 30. So, they were not. I usually ask them, were you born when I passed out of IIM? So, you have to ask them, were they born when, when you passed out of IIT out of school? So, yeah. that is the, the average age, I think, should be 29 and a half. I don't know. Or maybe 33. Because there are some of us oldies in the room. But that's the average age of the room. Uh, he's worked, of course, in India, rest of Asia, and other emerging markets. Like I said, he's a friend of CL. He knows Sudhi Satya, and he's been for 35 years, 30 years. More. Forget about it. Yeah, Sudhi doesn't want to come across in that road. Okay. He's presently the president of Brightcom Group and also the member of the board. And Peshwa's credentials run wrong. I tried to cut it short, but I'm going to take you all through some of the important things that we need to know before Peshwa speaks with us. Uh, he's actually been instrumental in setting up and building some of the India's largest brands. PNG, Reckitt, Reliance Retail, Reliance Digital, Sterling Holidays, and also startups like housing.com. So expansive experience. He has founded his own entrepreneurial startups at Peshwa. There are not one, but more than one, four to be precise. So think as a consumer.com, live in healthcare, Rocketworks, uh, and growth shift. His passion is actually to mentor young India. He does uh, consulting corporates also, and he mentors youth. Deeply driven by consumer insighting and innovation, he encourages uh, the best part is creative thinking and data-driven approach to solve any problem. So he has two children. His son, Upamanyu, graduated from IIM Ahmedabad and works in an FMCG domain. Daughter, Upasna, both starting with UPA. Uh, she's graduated from NIFT Bangalore and is a UI UX designer. He lives in Mumbai with his wife and two kids. They love traveling and exploring the globe. So over to you, Peshma, for your uh, insights. And I'm very excited. I've gone through your videos. And I'm sure we'll enjoy uh, receiving your inputs and your insights. Thank you. Thank you, Sujata, really for those kind words. Um, uh, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, can you hear me properly? Yes. yes. Okay, awesome. So... Um, Thanks, Suzy, once again, and Satya and Sujata, of course, for giving me the opportunity. The only thing is that this is also a full-fledged working day for me. So I'm in the middle of all these mess, as you can see. Huh? So I've taken one hour off. Huh? So, um, so uh, bear with me. I do not have any canned presentation, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Huh? So uh, I, that I can always share. Uh, but I would rather make it free flowing. Sujata, is that okay? Absolutely. I think yeah. people are bored of cash yeah. presentation. <laughs> yeah. And uh, one of the things which you guys can do is, you know, uh, and I think um, Sujata will also share with you, you can actually at some point of time uh, go through my uh, YouTube channel. There, there's lots on marketing on that. I have sent some of them to Sujata in the night and in the morning as links. <laughs> so yes. there is quite a bit and uh, you know can start the discussion on that um, make it participative whenever you want to ask me a question please do so first thing is i just want to see uh, can i see the people who are at the back please if you can raise your hand i just want to see yeah 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 okay and total how many people are there hello Okay, 30. Okay. And all of you are working all within India, in Delhi, Bangalore? Yes. 
एंगेजमेंट टू गो ओके सो लेट मी टेल यू द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ माई इन माई थर्ट इयर करियर द फर्स्ट टेन ट्वेल्व इयर्स इज वॉट इज कॉल्ड सी पी जी और एफ एम सी जी आर सम ऑफ यू फ्रॉम एफ एम सी जी इंडस्ट्री बैकग्राउंड एनी ऑफ यू वर्क इन एफ एम सी जी बिफोर एनी वन एनी वन कैन आई ओके ओके नो प्रॉब्लम सो आई टेल यू माई uh learning of fmcg and what fmcg brings on the table two things for me i of course worked in uh, procter png racket uh dabur stroke balsara huh? balsara i was the head of sales marketing it got acquired by dabur yeah so uh, and i am not going to company specifics but one of the things i think which fmcg brings on the table and some of those best practices some of you may want to inculcate you know because you have a, a career a long career in front of you is that one is in fmcg you have to do both sales distribution and marketing that's very important typically in fmcg the way it is defined marketing is generating the pull or off take sales distribution is actually fulfilling the offtake so it's very simple you know one is fulfillment and one is generating the offtake so sujatha what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to get into some of the concepts which are very basic because what i have learnt in life is simplicity is often times not very simple right. and common sense is not very common okay so i'm trying to make things very simple okay because that's where really you know people can uh, build on it so to me fmcg sales marketing marketing is generation of con, uh, of take one of the things of fmcg why marketing is important because the value addition of the brand actually happens from marketing so the difference between a commodity and the brand happens because of brand marketing um fmcg is also told to be one of the you know universities all holy grail of marketing is fmcg at least during our time it used to be i don't know whether that is any more now hmm. so that's really about the marketing they give a lot of importance to brand the whole uh, whole concept of brand management was actually born in the company where i started my career called png yeah so it was born there that and each of these brand managers are considered very important because they are like a mini ceo for their brand and uh, even at a very uh, junior age or at a young age they have the authority to drive what is right for the brand so let's say when i used to work there we had a uh, uh, aerial whisper vix vapora clear sil today you have a tide pantene all these brands in png or a detol detol soap in a racket whichever whatever it is so typically the brand manager of a detol is like a mini ceo okay so one of my take outs from this whole thing of brand management apart from understanding of marketing you know whether it is how to build great advertising how to do great digital how to do great social packaging distribution how to run great sales incentive schemes all this comes under brand management but something more also i have learned from there which i want to share with you Ach, all of you are looking very suitably bored no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> i am a little afraid that you know at this stage any questions anyone has the lady at the back in yellow dress yes yes put your hand up young lady <laughs> can you come a little forward and ask me if you have any questions any comments so so far i have no question okay and then there is i can see someone one a gentleman who's half shirt i can see yeah uh, now he is in the frame yes he is satya no no not satya i am not able to see satya ah who is this 
who has raised his hand? Sir, Nikhil. Okay. Aniket. Nikhil. 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 Okay, Nikhil, any questions, any thoughts, any comments? Uh, sir, nothing as of now. It is uh, very uh, nice to hear you from such experience. Okay, okay, okay. No, I'm just saying that I want to spend uh, 50 minutes, 45 minutes, but I want you guys to be in it rather than in somewhere else. You understand? Ask me a few questions and, you know, if there is anything. Hmm. So this is, uh, FMCG to me still is a little bit of a holy grail of marketing. Okay, because uh, they actually go through a very structured process. Yeah. The second thing of FMCG and in marketing, whether it's packaging, PR, the whole process of writing a creative brief, like in PNG, we learned if you can't put your thoughts in a one page memo, that means you can't do it very clear, you know, so everything, anything which cannot be written down cannot be executed in a large organization. Uh, so it might sound a little bureaucratic, but I have always, it has always stood me in good stead. The ability to transfer my thoughts into, uh, into paper. Another great learning in PNG I'm sharing with you, and this is like a tricks of trade, you know, is that you always write the inverted memo. It's called the inverted memo concept, which means in schools in India, if you look at it, we have always been taught to write compositional essays. Now, in a composition of essay, you always say background first, then you write the body, and then your conclusion is at the end. Huh? But in a PNG marketing memo, the conclusion always has to be on the top. So suppose some of you are writing that I need to do this program, and therefore I need uh, 10 lakh rupees as a marketing budget from Satya or Suzy or Sujata. Now, that has to be on the top and why you need it and all the reasons have to be at the bottom. Uh, so this is the first thing I have learned. Uh, uh, so these are some small things, but it really helps. Okay, next let me take, tell you a little bit about the sales. Uh, Sujata, are you with me? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. So this is an important one. It's really not marketing. It's more of really business writing. But for me, it has stood me in great stead that when you are writing a memo, uh, what you need to write to the superior or the uh, CXO, first write that, that I need so much of sanction. That's the top line. Then you need everything else. So it's a very different concept from what we in Indian Anglo-Saxon education system we have learned, huh? where it is more of talking of the background and all. Hmm. Okay, next let me get into sales. Has any of you done uh, sales? Who has actually started career in sales? Okay, where, gentlemen, where have you started? Can you tell me? Banking. Sorry, repeat. Banking. 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 Okay, which bank? I started the HDFC bank. HDFC bank. Okay, so that is retail or institutional or? It's retail. Retail. Okay. Deposits. Okay, deposits. And how was your day? How did you plan your day? So first, you know, I started uh, under a manager. So uh, we used to have a, a kind of a, a morning huddle at nine yeah. o'clock. Okay. Half an hour. So no, it's, it never used to be like training because training was already done. So it's about uh, numbers, the, chasing the milestones. And what are the today's leads that we have been for, we need to go, which are the markets that we need to go to scout for the deposits, okay. bring out the new customers. And then uh, it used to be kind of a three conference calls in between okay. about checking on what we are doing and uh, where, where we are supposed to the assigned tasks. Okay. So, so for these leads, leads yeah. you had to go to the leads or the leads used to come to you? No, no, we used to go to the leads. Okay. And then that and means where? Customers, new to the bank. No, so how did you go to their office, to their home? What was it? It's a market. For example, if it's a timber market, we need to scan the entire market. We need to get those visiting okay. cards, the business okay. cards from them. Okay, great. So great. That's kind of cool. Fantastic. Great. Thank you so much. What's your name, please? Navneet Anand. Okay, Navneet, thank you so much for sharing. Okay, so let me tell you what I wanted to share with you in terms of one of the classic things which I really like about FMCG is something called FMCG retail sales. Okay, 
So at my time, when I started 30 years ago, first thing I had to do when I was in sales was actually cover 50 or 40 outlet outlets in a day in a particular market. So suppose I go to Sadar Bazaar or I go to Chadni Chowk or I go to Bombay, Bandra or anything, Masjid, anywhere, there's something called a beat of 30 to 50 outlets, okay? You have to cover that, which means you have to physically go to the fellow and sell to him, okay? And not only that, you actually had something called a PJP. PJP means permanent journey plan, which means that you, suppose you are covering, uh, you know, you're the ASM or the AC or something, management training, anything you are, you have 25 days, you actually define that uh, day one, I'll go to the other market, day two, I'll go this, day three, I'll go to uh, wherever, Kolapur, Sholapur. So it's very defined PJP. So one of the learnings which I bring on the table is that, I always say that anyone who has worked in FMCG sales has a very structured way of working. And to some extent, what I see in HDFC, what you are saying also. So it's very different from other industries where you generally find out and go and meet people. You're meeting one dealer here and then some, something happens, you go to another dealer. Consumer durables is very unstructured. So one of the advantages of working in a uh, you know FMCG industry is that you have a very structured approach to sales. Uh, so that's one great net takeaway from you. And Sujata and Suzy, I mean, uh, so, uh, to uh, tell me a little bit nostalgic, right now my son is the ASM Pune. He was ASM Bombay for a FMCG company, Rekit Ben Kizer. Huh? Okay, and he's doing exactly the same thing. So nothing has changed. Only thing is that we used to do on a piece of paper. They all have, the DBSRs have notepads now as in electronic medium and the stores are on electronic medium and it's in the system, you know, you cannot do anything, but essentially the concept remains the same. Yeah. And so this is one great learning takeaway for me. Yeah. That um, uh, it really structures your sales process, FMCG. Okay. Next, let me get into the phase when I worked in telecom. So I worked in telecom in the early days, two telecom companies I worked in. One is what is called Hutch, then became Vodafone and the second one is Reliance Communication. Both I worked and I'll share with you a little bit of my learnings out of it. So what do you think is the biggest learning in telecom uh, marketing? Do you know what is a two, three, according to you, anyone can share with me what is the biggest learning? Persistence. Huh? Sorry? Persistence. Persistence, okay. As a marketer, you need to be a persistent, you know, kind sure. of a always bug the customer to buy a product yeah no actually in telecom jada you don't have to push much because you know telecom became very everyone needs it huh? but yeah okay anything else give you proper packages yeah i think to some extent yeah, yeah yeah so according to me for me i had two great takeaways when i came because i was from fmcg i moved to telecom okay so first thing of telecom is that your strategic planning cycle went off from six months to six days. Okay. And you have to execute now. So the way we used to do telecom and, you know, I was in Hutch, Bombay, the month I joined, that time it used to be called Orange. And the yes. next week, Hutch bought over the Eastern India Circle. Huh. Okay. And me and my boss, that is the CEO and CMO, were sent to Calcutta to take over that circle. Hi. It was called command and then it became Hutch. So we had to quickly go and do the integration. So for me, one of the learnings is that in telecom that time, things used to happen very fast. So in FMCG, you have a marketing planning cycle, which means you think of a strategy, then you discuss with your partners, then you kind of... Uh, you know, explain, get creatives, digital, whatever you want to do, and then you roll it out. You know, there was a certain planning construct. In telecom, that planning construct was seven days. Because uh, you we discuss, and typically at that time, the way it used to happen is that the, each circle had two people, two big players, you know, Hutch and Airtel, for example, in our circle. Hmm. Okay, so the CEOs and CMOs will meet they will agree on what the tariffs are. So uh, now is 16 rupees, let's get it down to 12 rupees. So they decide on a Saturday and the sales marketing team has to launch it in next four days. 
So the speed of execution, that's really what I picked up in telecom. So that's one. Second one is to some extent what Sujata mentioned, okay, which is how to do packaging. So India is one of the first countries where we actually made the product into a prepaid product and made it like an FMCG. That's how teledensity has really gone up, you know, because, uh, and that I think one of the things which the banking people have not been able to do. Banking is still not a prepaid product, you know, and hopefully with all these new startups, the wallets and the other fellows, hopefully it will become a little packaged prepaid. I mean, prepaid, of course, is good for the company because the money is paid in advance, but more importantly, it becomes a packaged product. So finally, telecom was also an FMCG. In fact, telecom was a bigger FMCG than the FMCG themselves. Because the penetration of telecom today, mobile telephony is higher than some of the FMCG products. Okay, so this is one of my learnings. Of course, my stint in Reliance Communication is a story of its own. Yeah, um, I am one of the few uh, senior management CXOs in the country who have had the fortune of working both with the two brothers, Anil Ambani and Mukesh Ambani, separately in two separate groups, huh? not when they were together. No, of course, I would not say whether it is fortunate or unfortunate, but that's a different question. Okay, but I have worked with both of them as my bosses, huh? uh, Anil Bhai and Mukesh Bhai, both of them. Yeah, and they are distinct styles of operation. Uh, my next stint was, uh, so I have told you a little bit of FMCG. In FMCG, I have missed out a little bit of my Balsara stint, which got later taken over by Dabur. Okay, so this is a very interesting story. Two things I want to say, very simple. Uh, again, one of the key learnings, without spending too much, you can find out ways of increasing your sale. Yeah, so that's my other one. Yes, please. Yes. Uh, so just a question, you know, uh, when you talked about increasing your presence in terms of distribution, uh, can you just please share a few examples from your days wherein you got into some strategic alliances, if any, during that point of time, or you just increased your own presence, uh, or you just went along with some, you know, strategic player over there in those markets. So how you thought about? No, in which industry I am asking? So for example, uh, you 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 said that uh, you you created a separate SBU, you know, vertical vertical, uh, which is uh, towards okay. in this Balsara. particular example you are asking me. Yeah, in Balsara, right? In Balsara. Yeah, yeah. So this is very simple. See, the national sales said under me and the marketing head, they are responsible for India. So we had around 1000 distributors in India. Yeah. So here the idea is that you are doing the same advertising. Why don't we capture new geographies? So this person we recruited as a sales head for SARC countries, he and me, we used to travel and actually set up distributors and franchises in all these countries I mentioned. So we had distributors in Bangladesh, Nepal. And the thing is that obviously you cannot sell FMCG from India to there because there'll be high import duty. So you have to find out ways of doing it. One or two places we also did manufacturing uh, tie-ups in Bangladesh. Got it? So it is essentially a distribution expansion. So one of the roles was actually to get the right distributors in each of the places. So that's, uh, that is the kind of no big strategic tie-up really. Okay. It was just, I think only in Sri Lanka, you can call it a strategic tie-up because the distributor who I got is a guy called Maharaja Company in Sri Lanka. He is the biggest FMCG distributor in Sri Lanka. When I used to work in PNG also, he was there. And later on, he became like a big company. You know, exactly to some extent like RJ Corp. All of you know about RJ Corp, na? Ravi Jaipuriya ji. Delhi based. Huh? He basically was Pepsi's bottler and uh, franchisee. Yeah. And later on, RJ Corp itself is now a big FMCG company. They have their own brands, Cream Bell and Ice Cream. And they are with all these various, you know, uh, KFC, this, that. They are franchises to a lot of things. Huh? So Maharaja, you can say, is a little bit of a strategic tie up in Sri Lanka. 
uh, we did uh, tie up with him. He's the biggest guy. So he's just not a distributor. He's a company of its own. Huh? So it was essentially very simple, man, nothing very strategic. Hmm. The strategic thing happened is when Balsara got acquired by Dabur. That is really when the strategic, that was the first acquisition of Dabur. And uh, that is another thing which I did where I was actually reporting to a gentleman who was the uh, uh, CEO of the company. Again, he is our alumni, I am C only. Uh, 12 batches, my senior. Huh? So he was a CEO, I, I was a COO. And he was reporting to the founder of Balsara, which is Mr. Balsara himself. So when Dabur acquired uh, Balsara, I became the point man for the integration. And my boss, who is this gentleman, he was a little sidelined. Uh, this is another learning of the corporate world. He was sidelined because the CEO of Dabur is actually few batches his junior. He's also IMC. So he cannot report to the CEO of Dabur. Na? Okay. So he was given a good parking slot. So I became kind of the SB. Sorry, why Sujata, why are you smiling? Parking slot. Yeah. Huh? So, sorry? Given a parking slot for that. Yeah, yeah. He was given a kind of, you know, money place. So I became the point man for the integration. And integration of two FMCG companies are very difficult because I had. Uh, 500 salespeople in Dabur and around 250 salespeople in Balsara. And I had to integrate in a way such that the best people stay and the not so good people are told to go. So it's a very tricky, it's a sales issue, HR issue, people's issue and all. Uh, but of course, they gave it to me for two reasons. One was that I can report to the CEO of Dabur because I'm few batches junior, no problem. Second, more importantly, when I got my job for Balsara, I actually had two offers, one from Balsara, one from Dabur. Okay, one in Delhi, one in Bombay. I took up the Bombay one because I'm more of a Mumbai car. You know, my family is in Bombay. I did not, so they knew me. You know, so they knew me and they knew my style, what is to be done. So I became the point man for the integration. Okay. Which is, of course, another story that how do brands get integrated? That is one learning of FMCG is that the brands might get sold, but the essence of the brand remains. For example, today, you still mention Babul. Na? It is nothing to do with who owns it. Sir, I have a question. Yes, please. Yes. Sunil. Yeah, you have to come a bit. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Uh, my name is Sunil. My question is when you said about uh, the, uh, you know, I mean, uh, Babul becoming a brand from 100 crore to 200 crore. Uh -huh. So uh, one question I have is because when you said about marketing and all, what I understand in FMCG, marketing doesn't start basically on the shelf. It is basically in the consumer mind. Because if you are basically able to put a, on place a product in the consumer's mind, and you are able to gain that attention or a love from the consumer for your product, then only you are able to win that marketing battle. Right. Absolutely so right. My, my point is, what are two, three, four different things which you might have done in order to make Babool a 200 crore you know, product or against the other product who might definitely be there on the shelf? So what are those things which you basically did to keep the product in the consumer mind? Because that might help us to you know put our product into the consumer's mind when we are going against the others also? Sure. Good question. I really like your question. Good question. Huh? Uh, so I'll tell you, as you rightly said, in FMCG trade, it is not just about fighting for shelf space. It's essentially fi fighting for consumer space, you know, mind space. And that's why the power of marketing is so large. If sales can only do fulfillment, but marketing has to get the mind space. And in a lot of Kirana stores in India, you actually cannot do a self-service. You will ask for the brand. So when you go there, you will say, give me a Colgate, give me a Pepsod and give me a Babul. Huh? That's the way it is. So unlike in international places where you can walk the aisles and you can actually pick up the various things you may not be able to do in India. So to answer your question, according to me, there are two, three things which we did in, in the case of Babul and it is applicable for any brand. One is... You have to be very, you have to know what the insight is. So good quality brands are actually built on insights. Second is you should be able to communicate the insight very well. And the third is you have to be consistent. 
so one of the problems of babul was a brand was that it became essentially a promo led brand what i mean promo led brand means at that time it was a cheap poor persons colgate that's how the brand was positioned colgate ka 50 rupya price hai babul mein aapko 1 plus 1 milta hai 50 mein okay so that was how it, they always ran 1 plus 1 but they did not have a reason for buying so what we did was we essentially created an insight this is based on the insight that when people do toothpaste in the morning or use toothpaste essentially they want to feel fresh huh. so freshness became the insight that it is not so much about frankly about how good your this thing is how strong your teeth is all that is fine you need to feel fresh so we built it on the insight that freshness is very more important and that's how I think that communication got created. Very successful communication. Suba hua to babul hua and all that. You know, there was, a, and it was done by, you know, that time one fellow called Prasun Joshi. Huh? Fairly you know, well known advertising fellow. Huh? We gave the brief and all that. So essentially, insight is equal to morning freshness. That is what babul can give and consistently talk about that and communicate that. So that was one way. And there might be a lot of other ways, you know, a um, lot of brands are built on packaging itself. Uh, so you can have, diff but so essentially you have to differentiate it in the consumer's mind. That's very important. It can be communication, you know, like, um, you know, in some of the brands like Dettol, Dettol is based on the fact that antiseptic 100% bath. That's what it is clearly doing. In fact, according to me, uh, since we moved on from Reckit, Reckit has actually fragmented the brand at all a little bit by launching too many variants. Huh. So, of course, that is not my problem anymore. That is my son's problem. <laughs> <laughs> so, I keep on telling him now, you have to solve that, huh? not me. Because I launched the brand called Detol Soap. Huh? Okay, so now he has to do something else. And there again, another very interesting story is that this is one of the few brands where the uh, daughter brand is bigger than the mother brand. So if you look at it, the mother brand is Dettol Antiseptic Liquid. You know what you use for cuts and nicks? That's a mother brand. Now that mother brand is only 200 or 300 crore turnover. But the daughter brand, which is Dettol Soap, is actually 3,000 or 4,000 crore turnover. Huh. So the daughter brand has become... So in my time, we did a lot of research before we actually launched Dettol Soap. You know, it was a big strategic decision that from an antiseptic liquid, you are actually moving to the soap category. It's a completely new category. And to some extent, Reckit India's success is because of Dettol Soap. That's the largest brand that is absolutely clear positioning, inside driven that people who want 100% antiseptic soap should use Dettol. No other brand has been able to come near to it, a Savlon or something else. Huh. Uh, sorry, I'm a little bit going storytelling style, but I hope you guys are picking up some insights yes. that in sales marketing, what it is. And thank you for asking some of those questions. Uh, I have yes, please, have please question. come towards the front because then I can see you. you. Don't mind. You will have a little bit of a walk. It's good. Pre-lunch, it is good to have a small walk. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. So you spoke about the speed of execution. And as we know that the and our markets, uh, what the segment you're talking about is retail sales, whether it is telecommunication or whether it is consumer durables. The mindsets of the people, the consumers, changes very quickly, and especially with the you know the COVID coming in, health has become a very uh, prominent uh, marketing uh, strategy. So products are based on that, which are healthier, which are more fitter, and those kind of things. Then how do you strategize that? Because you said speed of execution plays a very important role, and that was your takeaway. So how do you quickly change over that? Yeah, so what I said is speed of execution means my learning from telecom was that speed of execution is very important. Got so, it? So I meant that only, like now 5G will be coming in, Yeah. right? So there will there has to be a marketing strategy for that also because right. 4G is already what somebody's everybody's got used to it. Yeah. You know, 
and with a person like Juhi Chawla going and doing a course, a case on that for 5G. So there is a mindset with people, do they accept it? So what is the marketing strategies behind the behind that with the telecommunication? Yeah, so let me explain to you. I think there's a little bit of misunderstanding what I said and what you are meaning. Forget about telecommunication. What I meant was that in the FMCG marketing, your speed of execution can be one month, which means you think that this is a new campaign. You take one month to develop it. In my time, when telecom used to be there, speed of execution has to be one week. It has nothing to do with telecom. Forget telecom. I'm just giving you industry examples that in different industries, you have to have different speed of execution. Today, for example, it has to be one day, not even a day, half a day. Let me give you an example, that classic example of uh, which is quoted oftentimes, that the day demonetization happened, next day that Paytm fellow or whichever fellow actually came out with the ad. Got it? Now, for him, strategy is 12 hours. What I mean by that is that they have to uh, they have to think uh, immediately abhi kya karna hai quickly the cmo and the whoever else has to sit down with the ceo board take decisions quickly sign off don't wait for signature to come from cfo you have to quickly do it you know so what i mean is that as things are going the speed of execution is increasing. So I gave that as an example. Don't get into 5G and all. All that is not important here. No, here no. it is important so to... Food, so even with food retail, <laughs> where you said FMCG works uh, with the consumer durables also, yeah. the mindsets of people change very quickly. You know, from a product to a product. Because now with most of it is online sales also. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. So, and today everything is available. You know, so you cannot hide information. You have to give fast information. I'll tell you a classic example. Yeah, fast I mean, real consumer example. This is nothing to do with marketing. This is a real consumer example. My wife has been telling me that I have to change her washing machine. Okay. And I'm telling that boss, you get the specifications and get. So I said, you do a research. So she quickly sent me two example models. Yeah. She found out one and she wants a one with washer dryer built in. You know, a little high-end uh, front, uh, what is called front loading, washer dryer built in. Okay. So I said, you choose, I'll get it immediately. So she chose two. One is a, she sent me by WhatsApp. One is a Samsung. One is a Voltas Beko. Huh. Two things or some things and she sent me. So I said that, okay, let me send both of them. So I send it to the CMO of uh, Samsung and CMO of Voltas. Both are my direct report is. Okay. So I said, whoever responds faster, I'll buy that. <laughs> so you could afford to do that it's not the general public no, no, no. what i'm meaning is i'm giving you an example huh right. and obviously the voltas guy responded i said tell me mrp mop right now send immediately so i'm saying today's customers are looking at that kind of response yeah. so this happened at 8 42 when sujata and me we were whatsapping each other Sujata, if oh, you remember, no. huh? I send you something. <laughs> no, no, not that. I sent to, so that time I sent to this guy. So the point I'm trying to make, uh, the lady's name I did not get. Anita. 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 Yeah. yeah. So the point I'm trying to make is if you look at it today, the fifth P of marketing is space. Yes, yes, sir. Okay, so that's the point I'm trying to make. That but, my expectation as a consumer is, and a lot of these real estate fellows are calling me up because I'm thinking of buying something in Bombay. No, so for me, all that is not there. I want immediately on my WhatsApp, batao kya hai, I'll then take a call and let you know. So for many of the telemarketing things, things are changing. And I'll give you a classic example. A lot of companies are not changing. Um, last year, I bought a car called a Tata Harrier. Huh. I, of course, made a made a lot of decisions and all that and took, finally bought it. But uh, why are you guys la laughing? Because I have not bought a BMW or something. No, no sir. The sir, previous, sir there the, was a presentation uh, before you and uh, somebody was uh, not in favor of Tata. Yeah, yeah. So Tata Harrier is actually not great service. Neither it's a great design. But that's okay. That's forget that. <laughs> that's not the point I'm trying to say. The point I'm trying to say is that in this process, I took test drives in the various, uh, you know, kind of MUVs in that category. You know, so... Uh, what I have seen is there are two, three companies, Tata, Mahindra, huh, and maybe one or two, 
when you are doing this whole lead process, you know, I give a website call, the fellow calls up, they are only calling from a landline. They don't have a concept of a WhatsApp interface. Mm -hmm. And if you look at a customer my me, like me, I never take calls on landline. I cannot because I work from 9, 10, 10, 30 till 5, 6, 7. So if some salesperson has to reach me, he, he or she or whoever the bot has to send me a WhatsApp and then I'll call back when it is possible. So these two very large companies do not have it. And this is as of last year, I'm saying not very far away. Huh? So I'm just giving some examples of where even large companies are very archaic. And imagine if it is me and if it is my next generation, my son and daughter, they, to, they don't even want to talk to a telecaller. They want everything non-voice. Huh? So that's how customer paradigms are changing. Sorry, Anita, I just wanted to make that no, point of... Thank you yes. so much. Why did you buy Tata? Sorry, who is that person? Sorry, sorry. Uh, okay, please come check. up. Come up, yeah. yeah. Uh, my name is Ashish. I wanted to check why did you buy Tata Harrier in, in case these guys were not responding to on WhatsApp? And no, what made I, you buy a Tata product? See, boss, again, the CMO of Tata SUV is my bacha. So he will come to my house. Don't worry. For me, it's not an issue. He stays in the same building as me. Nakul, <laughs> he's the category head for all SUVs. TAS guy. Okay. So, see, I will never have a problem of service. But I'm saying general consumers will have. Huh? <laughs> But to answer your question of why Tata Harrier, because BHP by Carbuate is the best for Tata Harrier. If you're an engineering student, you will get into that. Huh. So eventually it was the product. Sorry? It was the product description, design. It was... No, it's largely the power. BHP was the highest, 175 BHP. You, were, you might be looking at that power as a feature, one of yeah. the features of the product. Yeah, I was only looking at power. If I look at it from a feature loaded inside the car, it's not good. Huh? But yeah. as a power, it's a fairly powerful car. It's a Chrysler, Fiat Chrysler engine. Yeah. 175 BHP made in Ranjangao in Pune. Yeah, so, yeah sorry. <laughs> okay. So, Keshwa, before you move on, what's your experience with CM? You had any such experience with CM that you text? Called. With what? With career launcher? No, no, no. I, I mean, I fortunately or unfortunately, my two kids have not gone through the CL process. You know, so for... Uh, uh, so they have, they have not done what I have told them to do. They have done whatever they wanted to do. So they have not gone through the CL process. But I can always check once if you ask me. Uh. Sure, sure. And which washing machine did you buy yesterday? Uh, I told you, no, Voltas Beko. Okay. Not yesterday, today I have given the order. Okay. <laughs> so, I have the question which is continuation to the previous one. Yes, please. Uh, my question is as you said that you basically have, uh, you know, branded Babool as the morning freshness. That yes. That is what you basically replaced in the consumer's mind as your product. And right. which is basically what made you, you know, go further increasing the revenue. Any example you would like to share from the uh, telecom industry where you replaced something as a product in the consumer's mind? Because if I look at FMCG, there are multiple examples. Like if I look at Coca-Cola, they changed the branding of Coca-Cola, Thanda Matlab Coca-Cola. It is like they changed the meaning of it. And that is how basically they grabbed the attention because anybody who's looking for Thanda, they just go for Coca-Cola. Yeah. Okay. That is how they have branded it. Yeah. So let me tell you, basically in... Uh... Telecom, there are two examples I remember. One was, this is based after doing a lot of research. And this is in early 2000. We remember, we understood that why people buy a telecom network is largely because of quality of network. And that was the genesis of the Hatch Park campaign. All of you have seen that dog campaign. Na? So it essentially says that our quality of network is better. So this was based on the research which I had done, which said that you might have many things, but quality of network is most important. So I think, and that was a fairly successful campaign. You know, that was what really the premise of Hutch was. And even Vodafone continued it after acquisition. This was one. The second one is not so much on insight, but... I did something in Reliance Communication which stood them in good stead. 
रिलायंस कम्युनिकेशन इज अंपनी रिलायंस मोबाइल विच इज नाउ गॉन अनिल अंबानी कंपनी वन स्टार पॉन्डेम इट इज वेरी बिग लार्ज मार्केट शेयर एंड वी हैड लार्ज मार्केटिंग बजट रियली लार्ज सो आई थिंक आई टूक ओनली वन डिसीजन आई वर्क देर फॉर अ शॉर्ट पीरियड आई थिंक वन इयर और समथिंग वन और वन एंड हाफ इयर बट आई ओनली टूक वन डिसीजन आई थिंक विच हेल्प द ब्रांड दिस वॉज इन आई थिंक टू थाउजेंड इलेवन और समथिंग the one decision i am talking from a advertising point of view not product decisions we to launch 3g we launched mnp mobile number portability all that we did ha huh? but in terms of the communication decision only one decision i launched which is uh, so myself and uh, the ceo and anil ambani and tina mun mane bhabhi as we call ha huh? okay we were actually discussing that that time the brand ambassador of uh, Reliance communication was Rithik Roshan. Think, can I get someone else so that we reduce cost and save from my marketing budget? So essentially, what we did was we got I got the one movie wonder. That time there was a movie called Band Baja Barat. So I got Anushka and this Ranveer chap, Ranveer Singh, red pant guy. Okay, so two of them. they were just a one movie wonder and i still remember i was both of them i took interview separately tami kal ran vijay there is one uh, rodis ka ran vijay it was a tremendous success because i think we had the ability of finding out that the potential of anushka is great in the long term that time anushka was a one movie wonder but since then anushka stayed with us you know from 2000 i think 10 11 to 2015 16 till so these are again some of the gambits in marketing you have to take it's like buying a stock you have to buy the share when the price is right and let it be there with you ha huh. if you buy only a tcs then you cannot make too much of money because the price is already you know up there yeah so uh, sorry so th- this is i don't know whether this is insight but this is another example from telecom where actually we kind of a Reliance Mobile was a little bit of a staggering brand. One of the problems of Reliance Mobile was that it was considered like a poor man's poor mobile man. phone. It was typically like a bubble, which is not the. It was like a bubble, you know. It's not poor man's Colgate type. Also, it was used by not the, not the, I mean, high-profile people of society. So by getting Anushka in, we actually changed the profile of the brand, made it younger, more contemporary. you know it still could may not have become a hutch but somewhere we went towards that huh? so that is the other insight okay i have only 12 minutes i th- think is that correct sujata yeah but go ahead peshwa you take another 20 we'll run a little into lunch and that's absolutely okay okay theek okay. hai theek hai so let me next quickly get into my next phase of career which is one of my interesting phases where i was one of the first employees of reliance retail so today reliance retail according to me is a around a 220 billion dollar valuation of course it's in the gray money it's not a listed company but whatever i know of the uh, share transfers which are happening and it's a fairly large uh, valuation company um and i think hopefully i have a certain small role in it so here i started by building the uh, format called reliance digital uh, then of course uh, i was cmo for reliance fresh reliance smart reliance super so my learning here in the retail business in modern retail and that time there was no e-commerce it was basically modern retail you know the way we did was reliance has no understanding of consumer business or retail reliance was essentially a petrochemical giant yeah and even telecom what reliance knew was given away to the other brother so they were essentially a b2b business yeah so first thing for me was to get the b2c dna in the company that's number 1 number 2 is we did a very interesting thing of hiring lot of smes from across the world so my job as a cmo smes mean subject matter experts you know so we actually had one fellow from circuit city one from best buy five from walmart all of them tarje these all um, uh, anglo saxons white people came sat in the conference room and my job mandate which i got from the management mda was peshwa extract all knowledge and information and transfer it to so i was like a knowledge transfer person 
you know what works there and lot of it which you see today of reliance retail is courtesy that you know because they have that's the difference between a reliance retail and a dmart because dmart has got the knowledge completely ground up whereas reliance retail has actually got global best practices and put it on so i have a lot of respect for the way it happened in reliance retail of course it was very um, how do i say taxing time for us because uh, we used to work practically 72 to 84 hours in office every week so come at 10 o'clock go at 11 o'clock in the night six days a week and the sundays also used to be in uh, if not in office you know so that's the way we used to work so fairly taxing time but that's how i think you know really uh, if you want to build enterprise value in a short period i think that's how it happens you know uh, so a lot of hard work not only me of a lot of people so for me the marketing learning from retail is that you have to plan everything in advance plan everything in advance and this is a very simple management principle um, is sujita and satya also here yes both yeah, of yeah. them are okay 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 theek hai no i don't want to give too much of funda to the big guys so uh, so i thought so but let me still tell the very basics of management principle which i use even today in my day to day life or my working life is something called pr cycle planning execution review planning execution review anything which we do is planning execution review one of the things i have seen in most indian companies is that they spend very little time on planning everything is execution very little on review that's how it happens so and uh, you know more anglo saxon companies you have and more uh, you know japanese companies you have they spend a lot of time on planning so one of the things of any retail business which i picked up from reliance retail is that you have to spend a lot of time on planning then execution becomes much easier much standardized so this is one of my learnings because as the cmo i had to handle 1500 stores across the country across i think 10 formats you know so reliance digital reliance digital mini reliance i store reliance super reliance mart reliance fresh reliance auto zone all these were under me basically all the non lifestyle formats you know lifestyle formats used to be out of bangalore and biju kurian used to head that huh? so i'm saying and so the complexity was very high these kind of formats with various kinds of you know supply chain teams all store managers so it's a very complex situation so if you can standardize things it's always better so that's one of my learnings uniformity and standardization of whatever you do you know simple promotions pricing of course pricing you can't standardize because each item in each store is different so the the price of potato in south bombay reliance fresh versus the thane reliance fresh versus bandra is different and uh, we have to handle that so for me one of the learnings is planning and i am giving you a very simple example and this i think many of uh, us in consumer marketing may still be using it which is that you know we have something called sales which are related to event event related sales you know at least consumer product it happens i don't know how much happens in a education thing but event related sales definitely happens so you know that diwali will happen christmas will happen um i still know that raksha bandhan 8th august whatever we have to do this is actually planned in the month of april and kept ready so in month of april negotiation between reliance our team and the cadbury team and all happens what gross margins to be given what extra margins to be given everything is ready so essentially the calendarization of marketing and sales is very important this is one thing uh, you know which in reliance retail i really uh, learned huh? so i want to share with you that and uh, you know and often times it's very similar you will only have black swan events few it's not that always every event is a black swan event huh? and uh, you also have to have the capability of doing moment marketing but that is separately so then let me get into my next phase of career where between 2015 to 2020 i was with hospitality with fairfax group thomas cook sterling holidays and i did a complete overall of sterling holidays so two things i did 
one was and i'm sharing this with you because you may go, go back with some learnings you know that's how i'm kind of look, doing a little bit of my career story which hopefully can give some learnings or some quintessence some takeaways so two things i did in sterling one is i did a complete overall of the business model so when i joined we had around 15 uh, resorts and most of our 80 percent or 90 percent of our revenue was something called timeshare or vacation ownership yeah where you actually subscribe and pay money and then do it i changed the model into a timeshare and a hotel model so when i left we had around 45 resorts 50 percent of revenue is from timeshare or even less 45 percent timeshare 55 percent from normal hotels so one is a business model change and uh, this is one thing which has stood good for sterling because the combination gives them that diversification of portfolio so during COVID times, actually the timeshare sales gave them good thing because the fellows had to pay. Whereas non-COVID time after COVID, occupancy is 100% because there is revenge tourism. <laughs> uh -huh. So you, most of the weekends, you will not get Sterling holidays booking. You know, so combination was really a good, uh, strong combination. Of course, the other thing is that when I joined, I think we were kind of bleeding very badly cash losses EBITDA losses huh? when i left i think it is little EBITDA positive i was able to do huh? but that is not just sales marketing is a combination of many things so business model changed oh one more thing very important is that i we strongly worked on uh, previously all resorts were greenfield resorts which is our asset so when i left all my resorts i made it asset light which is essentially either leased or it's called a management contract. So these are really not necessarily sales marketing, but these are very really important business things. And on the marketing part, clearly Sterling, I positioned Sterling on something called experiential holidays. In fact, I created a term called DNE. DNE is something like BNH, Benson and Hedges. Okay, DNE means discoveries and experiences. Okay, so you go to Sterling not for the food, breakfast, bed, and all that. You go for DNA. Huh. So, uh, but my biggest learning from this stint as a uh, chief operating officer or chief marketing officer is that in a services marketing, it's really not just about communication at the product, it's about the last mile service. And uh, I think I was one of the few chief operating officers or CMOs who. I have traveled to all my 45 resorts. All the people in the resort know me. Of course, all the chefs know me very well because you can see I'm a foodie. But okay, that apart. And you know, and they really like because chef's job is to create great quality, innovative dishes. If someone comes and really gets into details and kind of you know ask them what is it, they really like it. You know, it's like people asking about your own function. Oh. So if you have to be in consumer services marketing, you have to give a lot of importance to services and the service part and the people part. Ah, so it's not just about the communication part. In fact, when I did the brand relaunch, I did two, three sessions uh, across the country. First, relaunching the brand within the people and employees then actually taking it to out that's a very important one they have to understand and you know, a lot of very small small things i did for example every fellow is supposed to carry a uh, booklet of what the new brand is what is the philosophy so it's like a brand booklet these are simple things and you have to remember that in this business unlike yours where most of the salespeople in CNL will be of a certain background and education and, you know, certain stature. Here, the person who is actually interacting with the customer, that f &B service guy in the restaurant or the fellow who is taking your housekeeping guy, they are fairly low level people. But that is really where the brand is coming into interaction with the customers. So as a senior management, our job is to ensure that some difference is happening there. And we did a lot of interesting things, a lot of training. So training has a big role in, uh, in consumer services marketing. Yeah.
So then let me come to the next part of my career, which is 2020 to now. I have been in education. Are people sleeping off? No, not at all. Okay. The two ladies at the back, one lady with the hand on her cheeks. Yeah. yeah. Sir, me okay. only. I asked you okay. a question. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> so, my last stint, I was actually before my Brightcom stint, I was the chief operating officer and chief business officer of a group called Ampersand Group. Essentially, uh, one of the businesses uh, they run is called Vibgyor Schools, K 12 schools. You know, which some of you would be familiar and all that. So That's there it is now. very, yeah, there it is very simple. Funnel is essentially leads, leads get converted into appointments and appointments get converted into actual business, which is the fellow has to write the check. Okay. So it's very similar, I think, possibly to your funnel. Is that true, Sujata? What happened? Yeah, <laughs> Huh? Today, yes, possibly. True, true. Yeah. Okay. And what used to happen is pre-COVID, if I'm getting 100 leads, out of that, only uh, 40 used to come from digital sources, 60 used to be non-digital. The year I was there, I was in the year 2020. In that year, I ensured that 80% of the leads are digital, only 20 is non-digital. So it's a complete change. And um, I joined them in uh, uh, April 2020, COVID. height of COVID. So within a month, I took a decision of changing the money allocation and focusing on digital within a month. And people who are handling the digital lead gen here, I think they're doing a lot of tips and tricks. I hope so. The part of the group who are doing that. You know, um, so each business has, what is your cost per lead? Digital. Uh, sir, uh, we spend now 8% is usually the amount we spend. That is cost per acquisition. Not cost per acquisition, cost per lead. Cost per lead, for, it differs from product to product. One of the product cost per lead is 165 rupees at an average of last 22 months. No, give me what is the size of the product, revenue of the product? Dola uh, Kupia. The. ARPU, ARPU is about 23,000. Okay. Do you have a higher ARPU product? In the same program portfolio, we do have it. Batao, I want to know the, for the higher ARPU product, what is the cost per lead? For MBA, for MBA, for MBA category, it's around 350, sir. 350, okay. Uh, and MBA would be how much? 2 lakh, 5 lakh? 50,000. 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, okay, okay. 50,000 kill 350 rupees. Okay. And what is your cost per acquisition of that 350 rupees? If I convert into cost per acquisition. No, no, don't get employee cost. Consider cost per acquisition from a marketing point of view. Uh, okay, so 20% means 10,000 rupees. Is that correct? So 20% is across the portfolio. <coughs> is marketing cost MCAC? No, for this particular product. For this, for this particular product will be roughly around 8 to 10%, 8 to 12%. 8 to 12%. So let's say 5,000 rupees. Hmm. Okay, so what I'm basically trying to say is one of the things which I did in Vibgyor is very simple. I found out what was the cost per lead for the K-12 category, you know, by some way. So our cost per lead for the fellows who are operating it, and there are a lot of fellows there, Ryan, this, that, DPS, lot of people. Huh? So their digital cost per lead was typically around 500 rupees huh? or 600 rupees. Hello? What happened? Yeah, yeah, Okay. So yeah. your voice was a little garbled if you can repeat what you said. I'm saying what I did was I just did a industry analysis of what the cost per lead for our category is similar. You know, things like Ryan, things like uh, DPS and other people who are in this, Chaitanya, Techno, there are a lot of fellows in that more or less category. Hmm. So there I found out that cost per lead for digital was anything between 500 to 750 rupees for these people. And I gave my digital marketing team that boss, 
तुझे इन नॉट सेवन फिफ्टी आई वॉन्ट इट एट थ्री हंड्रेड वॉट हैपन इस लंच टाइम नो ना आई फिनिश ऑफ फाइव टेन मिनट्स हाँ हाँ ओके यू हैव यू हैव अनदर या आई ट्राइ टू काइंड ऑफ रैप अप सो इट्स वेरी सिंपल लुक एट द इंडस्ट्री सी कैन यू बेटर इट but finally in digital it is not cost per lead it's finally cost of acquisition because if you get a poor quality lead the acquisition will not happen and i think the vibio team did a fairly good job my cost per lead where the industry was 500 to 700 is actually 250 300 350 you know that is what during that time when i was there we did it and we used to track it every kind of 7 days 15 days in fact we had a dashboard where Uh, we were tracking which campaign is getting us better cost per lead and accordingly spend more on the campaign so these i think all the digital marketing guys all obviously will do but it is all about precision but tell me can you share with me some of your tips and tricks of your industry which enhances your uh, you know adwords or digital marketing can the digital marketing guy tell me can you come in the front near the speaker and tell me tips and tricks of your industry that this has worked uh, so basically because uh, i majorly work for mba uh, our product major highlight is that we are the closest to the ocean tech series so uh, what we do is for because that is our major uh, uh, how do i put it right uh, the our major insight is that we are closest to the ocean cat exam so our marketing is uh, marketing channels and marketing dialogues that we use That I majorly focus on that. That uh, if you take our test series, uh, that will that will be closest to the original exam that you give as well. No, I understand, but I'm saying from a digital marketing, if you give me one or two insights around the digital marketing process, not about the product, is there some insights which you have learned which can be the company's knowledge base? Which kind of adverts? What adverts? Okay. okay. Uh, so we basically uh, majorly work with uh, Google search only, and we use uh, discovery as well. Okay. Uh, we use uh, Facebook. Uh, so, usme uh, what has Facebook worked? Majorly we use for remarketing. Yeah. So uh, what I'm trying to ask you is that I'm wanting from you an insight that in Facebook, if I do a geo targeting in the metro in this area, it works in this area. I'm wanting that kind of details, not general funda. Okay. Uh, so majorly, what works is that, uh, for example, in India itself, uh, if I give a more generic kind of a keyword, for example, uh, a person taking cat online coaching, that usually doesn't give a more quality lead. Better than that would be a person looking for best cat online coaching for this specific year. Okay, great. If I if I give them more specifics, great. a little more specific with keyword, ki, uh, this Fantastic. specific year. Or going to this specific uh, targeting with this specific person, I love this specific college. That gives me much better and much more quality lead. Then that's perfect. Good. Perfect. Thank you. What's your name? Uh, Nikhil, sir. Nikhil. So yes. Nikhil, this is what I am wanting that the digital marketing team has to get learnings documented for the company so that the learnings become people agnostic. Got it? Yes, sir. That is what a good quality company is about. Ah. Huh. Yes. Okay, and of course, I'm I'm also telling this to Sujit and Satya in a certain way, but I'm telling it to you. Huh. Okay, that's how you build great quality companies. Okay, thank you, Nikhil. I really appreciate. Yeah, let me also share with you some of my learnings, very specifics. Okay, we do, we used to do a lot of adverts for Vibgyor schools. Huh? We used to spend a lot of money on search. One of my learnings was that rather than saying best K twelve school in Bombay. it is much better to say best k12 school in airoli best k12 school in goregaon it gives me much higher roi so this is one of my learnings nikhil do you agree with this uh, yes sir actually we, yeah. we are doing that as well we yeah no 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 you are doing it but this learning has to be documented that's what i'm trying to say so that the team knows ha huh? so this is one for me second one is very interesting one i did which is that i used to notice that lot of searches actually happen after office hours and in for some reason on google knowledge graph the school used to show that it is closed after office hours i actually used to change it and keep it open till 12 o'clock because it's just a google you don't have to do anything you have to just change it huh? that is number 2 
Number three, very interesting one. This is an outstanding one which we came across is that uh, sometimes what people do is they have to search and where the school is, how far it is and all that. Huh? And many of our schools are not necessarily on the poshest of places. So it's not at Aurangzeb Road. It will be some Shai Baba somewhere, that kind. You know, that is how it is. So what we used to do was the road which is in front of our school, we used to actually name it Vibgyor Road. You can do it on Google. Okay. <laughs> yes. So this is to call Airoli Vibgyor Road. The one was called Airoli, this Puna, uh, you know, this thing, uh, uh, NBSM, uh, something road, you can actually call it. So these are some of the tips and tricks of of digital marketing the second one and uh, uh, sorry ladies and gentlemen this will constantly change this is what i did in 2020 2022 it will change 2024 it will be but the company at an outstanding team like you must have this documented and shared huh? the next one which i did was again uh, um, i think what was very interesting is that of course, in terms of search, it is important. Social media will become important. Huh? Uh, the one more, I think, very interesting one, which we did in terms of getting, huh? very important, which is that before I came in, they did not give too much of importance to Google reviews because the team did not understand the value of Google reviews. So what I did was I gave them a target that every month the individual sales uh, school sales team has to ensure 100 Google reviews because that increases the search intensity and the quality of the search. Google gives a lot of importance to that. Huh? Of course, you should not do false reviews. But in our case, what happens is that when the parents come and actually take admission, you can tell them to put up a review, you know, and they will do it because parents are usually quite engaged to the school. School is one of the fairly engaged services, you know, and the fellow has to also live with the school for five, 10 years. Huh? So it is not like an impulse purchase for some time. So you actually drive Google reviews that helps in the overall search. Huh? So these are some of the small tips and tricks. I have a whole laundry list, but I just wanted to share with you that even in the case of education, it is very important. And uh, some of you can actually go to the with your uh, YouTube and see the latest uh, you know, communication, which we did. Huh? So I gave a lot of, see what I did was that whole sales process um, where the normally the fellow comes and does a meeting. I actually structured it into 45 videos. So for everything, there was a video made. For example, how in our school, um, the bus system is better than other bus systems because our bus has GPS, an SMS goes, there's a lot of technology. So previously it used to be told, pre-pandemic, it used to be told by the, uh, we call the counselor, huh? actually the salesperson at the school, but I converted it into making structured videos on each of these items. And there are 40 videos which I created, 40, 45 video, videos actually shot. Because the advantage of that is, the sales process is a little standardized. So suppose Nikhil is selling somewhere, he will sell in a certain way, but he can also use the video. Today, the way it happens is you can tell the parent, sir, why don't you see the video? And then let me explain if you have not understood anything. So the sales process is bigger. So I made the whole sales process. Basically, the features in, in marketing, we call it fabbing, feature attribute benefit. So we actually did a fabbing process and uh, made videos out of it. So everything of the school, fact that it's English medium, fact that we have a lot of these internal things in the school. You know, we have these events which build the uh, kids, our bus system, our canteen system, everything. The fact that there is uh, complete portability of the kid. So one of the advantages of Vibgyor is that all its 45 odd schools run the same curriculum on the same day across 45 centers. So if one kid is moving from one place to the other, uh, then he doesn't lose anything, exactly the curriculum. So that is one thing. Second one is that, uh, and this is very important for the IT folks, which is we have a lot of schools in Pune and Bangalore. So if someone is getting transferred or leaves a job from Pune and Bangalore, otherwise this schooling is a nightmare in India, you know. Uh, 
and especially till the age of you know five seven ten eight nine ten you can't move here it's a seamless transfer so all these things we made it into a video form and uh, some of the videos also were the chairman's video vice chairman's video their vision so basically create that whole content bank so one of the things uh, which what you told me is about how is it changing post covid huh? so according to me two three things are changing and i mean i'm towards my kind of end huh? and i'm happy to take a lot of uh, you know questions by email later on if someone sends it i'm just putting my uh, mail there huh? i'm happy to answer uh, anything which i can be of help huh? okay can you guys see yes yeah yeah okay and of course this is my company on mentorship itself so this i am doing a plug okay so we have a company which is about mentorship of young corporate professionals between 2 years of experience to 20 years experience and we have a galaxy of mentors with us lot of them are my batch mates huh, who are there across the world and uh, it's very personalized one on one mentorship which we do so this is a little bit of plug but let me go back so three things which i think has changed post pandemic one is in pandemic both as a sales person as well as a employee your communication skills have to be very good because you have to work remote at least blended something so that is one skill which has to really be upped you know uh, there are a lot of great managers i have seen who are very good managers but not necessarily very articulate you know so this is unfortunately in pandemic it's a problem you have to be articulate because you have to communicate with people so that is one according to me the second one is you know the power of videos have gone up you know lot of things you have to say on videos huh? and third is of course using all the technology all of them if you can't do it uh, zoom google how to do it multiple devices all that you have to do so some of the high end uh, sales i am talking of b2b sales the person has to know how to use it the way for example i do it i tell anyone who is selling to me i say that you send me by whatsapp then you do it so as i am watching on my phone i can uh, see it and you can talk huh? so some of these things you know simple things i think are changing hmm. and uh, i think overall consumers are now okay to uh, understand over virtually they don't need the person necessarily hmm. um, but this puts a little bit of uh, kind of burden back on the on the management that because it is virtually therefore the trust of the brand has to be higher so actually the power of branding increases see because you we were when you we are doing physically you are actually seeing a human being with a card something something but when you are not doing that the power of the brand increases i'm uh, sorry the 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 reason for the brand or that is very important so the trust quotient has to increase hmm. so as management i think we have to look at how do you build the trust of the brand that becomes very important in a Uh, post pandemic consumer product business i am saying anything which is a consumer service b2b is slightly different you know b2b the changes may not be that shift fast because again it's between two companies huh? so i think broadly this is what i have um and now of course i am with brightcom which is one of the you know really fast growing ad tech companies huge future because future is all about digital advertising and we have lot of interesting things we are doing so that's what i'm primarily doing i also you know little bit i'm on a board of a few ngos so i'm on a board of a you know so i spend a little bit of time i'm on a board of a company called magic bus it's into education and life skills huh. because uh, you know uh, education and mentoring is something which i quite like doing you know so that's the reason what else uh, nothing else really the last thing i can say is uh, i'm not talking of sales marketing but if you ask me my view point of what are the three most important things for a nation and now i am becoming a politician hmm. so i'm making a little bit of a political statement sujata hmm. so i'll end with that <laughs> okay
<laughs> no, there also we have no problem. We have one of our batchmates as a one of the most successful politicians. Okay, yeah. Mr. Kejriwal. Yeah. So, so according to me, uh, three important things for India. If I could do something very important, one is I think building health infrastructure. Two is building education infrastructure, and three is population control. For me, these are the three very important things, you know. And unfortunately, the third one, no one looks at, no one talks of. Okay, so nothing else, guys. Uh, thank you so much. I hope I have suitably kind of uh, owed you. Hmm. So thank you. Nothing else from my side. Yeah, happy to take some questions. Anything you think? Questions? Yeah, yeah. Any questions? Peshwa, thank you so much. Uh, I think uh, it's been a, a really a lively session. Uh, first time I actually saw you in a classroom uh, as a teacher, as a classmate, I've seen you many times. But <laughs> uh, So uh, lovely to have you here. I think it was invaluable, a lot of the stories that you shared. I personally uh, have not heard uh, so many of them, so it was very uh, lovely hearing them. Uh, I think we've just scratched the surface. I'm sure there are hundreds of things uh, we can uh, learn from you. So please follow you in again with your permission to guide us perhaps in a more structured way. And you know, I'm sure we can do a lot of things, but it was really lovely uh, just listening to you. Uh, your style is overpowering, you know, it engages everybody and uh, there are a lot of yeah. teachers in this room also and I think, you know, we all uh, love that part also. So, uh, thanks for taking out, I know you're a very busy guy, you love to, you know, it's amazing, it's, yeah. his energy is, is, is too good and uh, I really respect the enthusiasm and the, the hard work that you do and you continue to do. So, look forward to seeing you soon. Maybe when you're in Delhi, I'd like you to come and meet the team, all of Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We love that. Thanks for the opportunity, Sujit and everyone, you know, and uh, I have put my email. If anything, I can be of any help to the, uh, the uh, various, you know, colleagues, I'll be happy to do that. Uh, please feel free. Thank you, Sujit. Thank you, Sujata. Uh, and uh, uh, I hope we we'll learn from each other. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank your you. your, your energy and positivity is phenomenal. The way you interact, the way you, even remotely, you uh, pull up people, engage and pull up people from the back of the room. It's, it's amazing. I think you have given great insights to everybody because most of us feel challenged even when the person is sitting in front of us. Yeah, but I actually like physical. I don't like this virtual if you ask me. I'm a very physical person. So that's, the, that's the reason, Peshwa, you're able to do that. Because you actually get into the mind of the person. You, you are deeper. You transplant your spirit. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Appreciate. Please have a great day ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. All of thank us. you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.